What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Welcome to another off the cuff segment. It's very, very strange, but it seems to me like most of you guys prefer these new off the cuff episodes. So we're just gonna start the week off right with one. Uh, so here we go. It is 12.08 p.m. Let's get down to business. So you've already read the title of the episode, okay? You already know what we're gonna talk about. This is gonna be incredibly Polarizing, I'm sure, and a bunch of people are already pissed off in the comment section. Congratulations. I urge you, stick around and, and let's wait and see what I'm going to be talking about. So, this story was initially uh, broken. The story broke by my boy, whoop, here I am, Periscope. I'm actually going to move myself so you can see. Okay, so Periscope is probably one of the most knowledgeable people I know when it comes to... Uh, old school vintage orology uh, and kind of catching people in the act of doing not great stuff. So whether it be auction houses, uh, resellers, or uh, even watchmakers doing shady things, he is super duper knowledgeable. Again, it's at Periscope on Instagram. He is someone I definitely uh, look up to and, and he's just a, a wealth of information. So he posted something on his Instagram story about a week ago, and this got a bunch of my followers that also follow him sending me his Instagram post to my inbox and asking me to comment on it. I'm not as knowledgeable as Mr. Periscope, so I didn't initially want to talk about it, but the more I thought about it, it was like eating me up inside, and I was like, this is very interesting. So we're going to be talking about two watches that may initially seem quite different and then the more you look it's they're like very very similar so bomb at mercier right there riviera been around for a very long time it's now morphed into their uh premier kind of sports watch i'm going to show you a picture of one right now uh this is the most recent one 39 mil and it has a you know industrial bezel angular bezel i'm sick of this Hublot does it, AP does it, uh, Bell & Ross also has like a kind of industrial bezel, uh, Chopar has an industrial bezel watch, uh, you know, I think this is overdone, I think we've seen enough of it, I think the only angular bezel watch that I am very, very interested in owning one day would be the uh, Lariato, the, I think they call it the infinity dial, it has like this deep black uh, glossy I think it's Onyx actually dial with gold handset and it is just the most beautiful watch. Um, I'd actually take one of those over a salmon dial uh, Royal Oak, but I digress. We're talking about different watches today. So this Riviera, okay, looks fine if you're into this look, uh, has a kind of translucent, um, I wouldn't, it's not skeletonized, but you can still see the bits and bops inside the movement from the front because it's a translucent dial. So interesting, uh, sure. And then, you know, it's cool that you can see the date wheel here and then uh, boom, it, it's like the only number that isn't obscured. So this does have a date, it, it's not a ghost date. Very cool how they did that. And then we're gonna compare it to the IWC engineer. Now. You can also see some similarities off of that, right? Industrial bezel, whatever, whatever. Date complication, okay, cool. But Baum et Mercier is Richemont's entry-level watch brand, right? I'm not going to say that Baum et Mercier is inexpensive or even affordable because for the most part, they're not. They're, they're you know, a few thousand dollars. Um, but when we look at Richemont uh, and, and all the watchmakers they own and manage... Baum et Mercier is on the lower tiered list as far as expense goes. IWC, of course, is a very well-known powerhouse in the Swiss, Swiss watchmaking sphere. Excuse me, that was kind of a tongue twister. Swiss watchmaking sphere, Swiss watchmaking sphere, Swiss watchmaking sphere. I guess it's not that hard to say. I'm just an idiot. Um, so what was Periscope talking about? Well, he was mentioning how it's interesting that this sells for about four grand and this is like closer to 14 grand now I know what you're thinking well 
they just released in IWC and titanium. Yeah, this isn't the titanium one, though. This is stainless steel. And even if it were titanium, it's not going to add a ton to the cost of the watch. It shouldn't, at least. Uh, it might add some, but but not, you know, 10 grand more. So then I know what you're thinking. Well, there's, there's different internals, right? There's got to be something different inside the watch. The truth is, people are arguing about that also. Seems like they're not that different. Because when we look at this, and we start looking at the movement. Now, it doesn't specify the movement, but it's their Baumatic in-house. Uh, and it's 21 joules, 28,800 VPH sweep. And uh, it has, I believe, a, a 120. Let me see if I can pull it up. Do I have it? Yeah, right here. 120 hour power reserve. And it's the Baumatic BM131975A automatic in-house movement. And then we look at the engineer. This has their 32111 caliber in-house. Uh, it is 120 hour power reserve, 28,800 VPH, uh, 21 joule. So the same specs, but you know, there might be something different. Ends up, Richemann and these two watchmakers seem to be using what is essentially a reworked ETA base movement. Now, they're not using straight up ETA bases. They're just essentially redoing them, it seems. And even if they were using straight up ETA base movements, Link is yelling outside the door. I don't know if you can hear him. Why would, like, where's the $10,000 difference? I don't understand. I don't get it, and I'm, I'm actually asking you. I'm actually asking you. So let's look at the 28242, and this is obviously uh, one of the more common ETA movements, and this website, D Swiss, um, which is a very interesting dearth of information as well, breaks down the different grades in 28242s. Uh, top grade and the differences in grades, okay? So you can find ETA 28242s with 15 joules, 21 joules, or 25 joules. And uh, there's standard grade, elaborate grade, top grade, chronometer grade, okay? Both the Riviera and the IWC are using the 21 joule variants. And it's very, very interesting because the price difference is pretty much astronomical, Around four grand, just under four grand, and around fourteen grand, all for the name. I, you know, people ask me all the time how much are watches actually worth, and the truth is, it really comes down to brand equity, and oftentimes you really do pay for the name, and this is like an extreme example of it. Now. I'm not saying I caught IWC and Richemont Group and Baumet Mercier in the act of doing something terrible. No, I just caught them in the act of doing something incredibly common, where their brands that have bigger names have bigger price tags. But the internals are not really similar whatsoever. By the way, if you hear yelling again, that is Link because he wants to be in the episode right now. But uh, I have shut him out. He's been shunned. I'm joking. I love him. People complain that he's not in the episodes enough anymore. He was in one of the recent off the cuffs. But guys, what do you think about this? Because again, um, I'm a fan of the engineer, not so much a fan of the Riviera. Uh, the titanium engineer sounds very interesting, but when you start looking at these watches and, and, Periscope on his Instagram said that Richemont has lost the plot with this, with this price difference. Um, but what do you think? Leave me a comment and I learn from you just as much as you learn, you learn from me. And I don't want there to be necessarily arguments, but let's debate. Let's, let's debate in the comment section. So guys, I love you. I will catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time talent. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. All right, guys. Love ya.